friends, welcome back to another episode of Create with Miss Carrie. I have a special guest star today. This is my nephew, RJ. Uh, hi guys. So RJ brought us a book to read for today's art project and this is one of his favorites that he picked out. You wanna tell him what it is? Called Giraffes Can't Dance by... Giles Andre. And Guy Parker, Parker Reese. Reese. Guy Parker Reese. So we're going to read this story and then we're going to make a very colorful and funny looking giraffe. All right, ready to get started? Yep. Excellent. Giraffes Can't Dance by Giles Andre and Guy Parker Reese. Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slim, but his knees were awful crooked and his legs were rather thin. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots off trees, but when he tried to run around, he buckled at the knees. Now every year in Africa, they hold the jungle dance where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. And this year when the day arrived, poor Gerald felt so sad because when it came to dancing, he was really very bad. The warthogs started waltzing and the rhinos rock and rolled. The lions danced a tango that was elegant and bold. The chimps all did a cha-cha with a very Latin feel, and eight baboons then teamed up for a splendid Scottish reel. Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked toward the floor, but the lions saw him coming and they soon began to roar. Hey, look at clumsy Gerald, the animals all sneered. Giraffes can't dance, you silly fool. Oh, Gerald, you're so weird. Gerald simply froze up. He was rooted to the spot. They're right, he thought. I'm useless. Oh, I feel like such a clot. So he crept off from the dance floor and he started walking home. He never felt so sad before, so sad and so alone. Then he found a little clearing and he looked up at the sky. The moon can be so beautiful, he whispered with a sigh. Excuse me, coughed a cricket who'd seen Gerald earlier on, but sometimes when you're different, you just need a different song. Listen to the swaying grass and listen to the trees. To me, the sweetest music is those branches in the breeze. So imagine that lovely moon is playing just for you. Everything makes music if you really want it to. With that, the cricket smiled and picked up his violin. Then Gerald felt his body do the most amazing thing. His hooves had started shuffling, making circles on the ground. His neck was gently swaying and his tail was swishing round. He threw his arms out sideways and he swung them everywhere. And then he did a backward somersault and leapt up in the air. Gerald felt so wonderful, his mouth was open wide. I am dancing, yes, I'm dancing, I am dancing, Gerald cried. Then one by one, each animal who'd been there at the dance arrived while Gerald boogied on and watched him quite entranced. They shouted, it's a miracle. We must be in a dream. Gerald's the best dancer that we ever, ever seen. How did you learn to dance like that? Please, Gerald, tell us how. But Gerald simply twirled around and finished with a bow. Then he raised his head and looked up at the moon and stars above. We can all dance, he said, when we find music that we love. The end. 
Okay, today we are going to make our own giraffe and we're gonna make it extra colorful and use a bunch of the colors of the rainbow. That part will be really fun. So our yeah. giraffe is being silly and it is going to be looking at us upside down. It's kind of fun, right? Guys. Yeah. Comment down below if you ever, ever seen a giraffe looking at you upside down. Oh my goodness. I wonder if they have. I don't know. Okay, so we're going to start with our pencil and eraser. And I was telling RJ that even though we're recording this, if we make a mistake, we just erase it. It's no big deal. Yeah. What we're going to do, we're going to start with the giraffe's body. And we're going to do an upside down U shape. See how it's all the way over on the left side of the page? It's kind of scooted this all right, way. I'm going to do the same thing. Yep. I'm and do RJ, do you know what it's called when the paper is tall? What? I have to always. This one. When the paper is tall, it's called vertical. Have you heard that before? Yeah. Vertical? I think I have. Yeah. And if the paper is turned sideways like this, it's called horizontal. Those are big words. <laughs> okay, so now that we have the body, we're going to make the giraffe's neck stretch way up all the way to the top of the paper. So I'm going to start kind of right there where this line turns into a curve. And watch this. I'm going to go straight up. I'm going to curve it at the top. All right, straight. Uh-huh. Straight, straight up. up. And then get to the top and curve it just a little bit. Good. Yeah. No, it's not really That's good. All right, now the other side, I'm going to go straight up. See, it's getting skinnier, 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 and then it's going to curve it at the top, skinnier too. Skinnier and skinnier. Skinnier and skinnier. Well, yeah, if, if you've seen a giraffe's neck, it so it's going to go all the way off. Like, like the neck keeps going onto the table, so you don't have to curve it there. Let's try this way. Can you start down here? I think that's good to me. Okay, so let's do this one and go... Straight up like that and then okay. curve it just a little bit at the top. Perfect. Okay, so look what happened. We drew the giraffe's body and his head went off the page. So this is the funny part of our painting. We're going to turn our paper upside down. Okay. Upside down. And our giraffe is going to be looking at us upside down. So we're going to draw the giraffe's head right here. And we're going to start with his like nose and mouth area. Nose and mouth. Nose and mouth. Nose and mouth. His nose, nose, nose and mouth. mouth is kind of the shape of a diamond. Except see how it has curvy edges? Yeah. So if you don't know how to do that, you could put like a dot in the shape of a square and, and then just gonna keep curve on it around. Turning my paper. That's okay, you can turn your paper to make it work. I don't think that's gonna be really good. It's gonna get close. Keep going. Alright. Yeah, you got it. Good. Good. Okay, so turn it upside down so you can kind of see. Perfect. So that's gonna be his nose. We're gonna do this. We're gonna go and make sort of like a fun little nostril. A That's a, a nostril. Those are his nose holes. Now let's keep going. We've got his nose part of his face. Let's do his head. So it's going to go up, over, and down. Okay, and then a giraffe has ears that kind of look like a leaf. So way hey, up Aunt on Terry, the... Yeah. Do you think this should be a little bit higher? You can fix that if you want to. All right, so RJ's fixing something and I'm adding ears. This ear is going to go off the page for me and that's okay. Excellent. Okay, so a giraffe also doesn't just have ears, but he's got two little horns that stick up, right? Yeah, yeah that, that's what makes him look like a giraffe. Right now he looks like a cow with a very long neck. So let's make him look more like a giraffe. So he kind of has like little circles at the top and then they curve down. Little circles at mm -hmm. the top. Like that. And then, well, that's his horns. Yep, that's his horns. All right, and then. You got it. And then. Excellent. Okay, let's do his eyes. His eyes are sitting down here, sort and of here, on the outside. Needs to be higher. 
You can fix it. Go for it. And believe it or not, giraffes have very long eyelashes. I think a lot of animals that um, do live I outside have to have do long the eyelashes? You don't. If you if you think that looks like too fancy of a giraffe, that's okay. Uh, is that or is yours a girl? I, it could be. But I don't mind a boy. Boy, uh, boy giraffes can have long eyelashes too. Okay, we're almost done with the head. Let's keep going. So the giraffe also has sort of a dark patch on his face that goes up. Hang on, wait, I just like this. I, I didn't do like the black around okay good and the next one mm -hmm. good okay and we gotta give him a little bottom lip so this is sort of his top lip here watch what i'm gonna do no, wait, i'm gonna do a little a little line there for his lip and then I'm gonna do another one like this so he's kind of got a crooked little smile down below yes crooked I like it okay so it's gonna go down here he's looking a little bit mad well I don't think he's mad looking all right can you trace that to give him a little face yeah and then we just have one more thing to do and then we're gonna do a little cleanup with an eraser Good. Okay. All right. So now we need to connect the head to the neck. But remember I said it's going to go off the page. So I'm going to start his neck here and I'm going to go off the page here and then here and go off the page here. So now it looks like it curves off the page and connects to his neck like that. What a silly giraffe. Good. Okay. Grab your eraser because there's a few things that we're going to clean up. The first thing is I'm going to erase this line that separates the horns from the head. I'm just going to clean it up. Yeah, wait, what about the eyeballs? Well, we're going to color those in with oil pastels. I'm also going to clean up this line that connects that circle part to the rest of the horn so that it looks just like one shape. Hey guys, comment down below which one you think it looks better. Oh, well, I don't know if I want to compete with you, RJ. All right, one more thing to clean up. You ready? We're going to clean up this line that connects the body to the neck. I didn't even do that. Right there? You can erase that. Oh, that? Yeah. Here, do you need a big eraser? Okay, let's turn back right side up. Oh my goodness, they look so silly. Okay, and now we're ready for the next step. Oh. Okay, so now that we have our drawings done, we're going to start adding the dots or the patterns that are on a giraffe. And giraffes are cool because they almost look like they've got stones or bricks patterns on them. They're really neat. So we're going to use our pencil first, and then we're gonna add some oil pastel on top of it. So a giraffe's pattern is not really circles. It's sort of like rounded squares and triangles. So here's what I do. I just start building my dots or building my shapes to fill it up. And I leave a little space in between all these shapes. Good, yeah, keep going. And then, yeah. So yours doesn't have to look like mine. You can fill yours up any way you want to. Can, we, can you do the other dots? Will you do a little bit hard to me? A little bit hard? Well, what you can do is you go right next to it and then go away. So you do like the part that's closest to it first, like this. So go to close to it and then go away. Hey right. guys, if we get to the oil pastels part, you don't need to do our colors. You can do whatever you want. That's true. Yep, you can make your own art designs. Okay, you so you can do your favorite color. You can do uh, anything you want, or you can just do what, or you can just do the colors that we're doing. Exactly. You have lots of choices. All right, so RJ and I are going to keep filling up our giraffe with these shapes. All right, this is too much spots. I'm not going to do it. It's lot. too much. There's no such thing. I'm not going to do a lot of spots. All right. You do what you need to do. 
Okay, so now we're gonna put just a few dots up here on his neck that's right underneath his chin. And these are a little bit smaller because it's a smaller part of his body. So put a few more little dots way up there. Are you in Good. Excellent, okay. Let's talk for a second about colors. I'm gonna grab my color wheel and bring it over. That's a color wheel? This is a color wheel. Wait, is it still recording? It is still recording. Okay. Okay, so this is a color wheel, and a color wheel kind of tells you what colors look good together. And so we're going to talk about warm colors and cool colors today. Have you talked about warm colors and cool colors in art class before? Uh, yeah, but we need to do the colors that we're doing, but when we're doing our videos, you can do whatever you want. That's true. Let's talk about warm colors and cool colors. Ready? Okay, so when I say the word warm colors, what type of colors remind you of sunset or fire or what else is warm? Like a hot stove. What colors do you think of? I think of, can I have this? Uh-huh. Well, leave it here so they can see too. Okay. So what colors do you think of? Sunsets and fire. I think of red. Oh, you think of red? Let's turn it around so they can see all of these. Do you think of like reds and oranges and yellows? When you're talking about warm colors and fire and sunset and things like that, you're talking about yellows and oranges and reds. Those are warm colors. All right, now let's talk about cool colors. Cool colors are thing, colors that you think of when you're thinking about the colors of the ocean or the colors of the sky, or the colors of an iceberg. What colors do you think of? I think about an iceberg. An iceberg, and what colors would you paint an iceberg? A blue. Blues, yes. So cool colors are purples and blues and greens, things that remind you of things that are cool and cold. Okay. So this is why, let me tell you why I'm telling you all this. We're going to paint the body of the giraffe in warm colors. So remember, warm colors are gonna be yellows, oranges, reds, and the spots are going to be cool colors. So they're gonna be our purples, blues, blue, green, and greens. So we're gonna have a very colorful giraffe. Okay. Okay. All right, so grab your oil pastels, RJ. Oh yeah, I have mine. Oh yes. And I want you to look through your oil pastels and let's pick out the cool colors you see. I see turquoise, that's a good cool color. Hey guys, if you don't have oil pastels, you can just use crayons. You could use crayons, you're right. I have a dark purple. I'm gonna also get a blue because that's for an iceberg. Uh -huh. um, I've got some greens, that would be very nice. I got this green and I got, uh, I'm gonna get mint and the light green. Excellent, okay, and I have a dark, what is that? That's a dark, dark purple and a bright blue. All right, so we've got some uh, good, I just cool got, colors. All right, now I need wet. Oh, we're not doing warm yet. Let's do cool first. All right, so grab your cool colors, have them ready because all right, I'm gonna get purple. we're gonna start outlining our spots. Okay. We're not coloring these in, we're going to paint the inside of these. So we're just outlining. So I'm going to take my first color, purple, and I'm gonna outline five spots. Can I can I outline this blue? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm right. not one, two, three, four. I need to do one more. I'll do one more up here. Five. And then I'm gonna take my next color. I'm gonna to switch to a blue, and I'm gonna outline five more spots. I'm gonna have to color in. Okay, that's number three, number four. I'm just on number one. And number five. I know, I go very fast. All right, I think my next color is going to be green. My next color is going to be, uh, I have no idea what, this is going to, my next color is going to be violet. Ooh, that's a good one.
I have a friend named Violet. You have a friend named Violet? I like that name. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I have five green. All right, my favorite color is turquoise. So I'm going to do my turquoise dots next. All right. And my next color now is going to be mint. Mint? I think it's called mint. What is it called? It looks minty. It's called bright more... I don't know. Oh, well, that was a different language. Um, this is sea green is what that one is called. It kind of looks mint, though. It does look a little minty. Let's turn our giraffes upside down so we can work on the face a little bit. Okay. It won't really work upside down. <laughs> okay, so... We need to color in this center part a dark, cool color. So I think I'm gonna do mine in purple. And I'm not gonna color it, I'm just going to outline it. I'm gonna outline mine blue. Ooh. Oh, that's not really looking like blue. I thought that was the real blue, but You can fine. go on top of it if you want to. It's fine, I like this color anyway. Okay, that works. Yeah, wait. Oh, I forgot to erase the bottom right here. All right, you can do that part. All right, let's see. What else am I going to outline? I'm also going to outline his big nose shape that we drew. And his mouth down at the bottom there. Oh, no, I made a little circle. That's yeah, all right. You're doing good. It's just mistakes happen. Yeah, that's very true. Accidents happen. Now yeah. Okay. thing. That's fine. Okay, you want to do the nose and the mouth too? All right, nose and mouth. Yep, this big shape and then this. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to take an even darker color and I'm going to I'm color gonna, in the this, eyes. This one was on purpose. I don't want it just being mixed up. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to do circles. I like that. That was a good idea. Okay, so I'm going to color in the eyes with a dark color. Giraffes have really dark eyes. Yeah, I'm They probably gonna... don't have purple eyes, but they, they have very dark eyes. Since this was kind of like a light blue, I'm going to use uh, regular blue, if, but regular blue is actually kind of dark, so. That's a good idea. All right, and the last thing that I'm going to do with my oil pastel is with black. And I'm going to trace my nostrils. There's little spirals that I I'm going to get black. Is this black? Yep, you got it. And because mine has eyelashes, I'm gonna go ahead and trace those eyelashes. How, how, this is not the right way. Mm, let's do this. Well, I think it's just flat. There you go, that'll work. Okay. All right, so can you do yeah. the little spirals there for his nose? Uh. That's okay. That's all right. What in the world is this? I have a piece of giraffe trivia. You ready for it? Well, Did you know what color giraffe's tongues are? What? They're blue. Ooh! <laughs> Did you know that? Giraffes have blue tongues. Ooh, what if we colored the inside of his mouth blue? Because he has a blue tongue. I like, <laughs> I like it. Blue tongue. So if you ever go to the zoo and they feed the giraffe, they have a very long tongue that stretches out and it curls up to get the leaves that you're holding, and it's blue. Isn't that crazy? All right, so let's get that blue. And that's blue. Okay, so I think we're ready for If you for guys want to make it pink and yours is not eating the grass, that's actually kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, you can actually make it whatever color you want. Okay, so everything's outlined, and the next step is paint. Okay, so now that we have our outline done and our oil pastel part done, it is time to paint. So I'm going to start with the parts of the giraffe that are like his ears and part of his face and the 
in between the spots area. See Ooh. what I mean? See the in between the spots area? Yeah. So remember I talked about warm colors and cool colors, right? Yep. Yep. So we're going to do warm colors for the in between the spots area. And we're going to do a painting trick called wet on wet painting. So what that means is I take my clean, wet paintbrush. Go ahead and get your paintbrush wet. All right. Let's start with the ear just because it's nice and easy. We're going to paint the ear of the giraffe with just plain, clean water. Why are we putting water on the ear? Because this is how you do wet on wet painting. So you get the paper wet first. I am. Excellent. Okay. Now let's take some, let's do yellow. Take some yellow, get yellow on your paintbrush, so swish it around. Good. And then you're going to put the yellow right on top of where your paper is wet and watch how it spreads by itself. It's not spreading. It spreads a little bit. <clears throat> it's not really spreading though. It's not spreading for you. It's spreading pretty well for me. So it spreads a little bit, and then here's something cool that you can do. I'm gonna clean off my paintbrush. It's okay if you go outside the lines, <coughs> I'm going outside the lines also. No, yeah, that happens. All right, so I'm cleaned off my paintbrush, and I'm gonna get some light orange, and I'm gonna add some light orange around the edges of that ear shape. All right. And the paint, the yellow paint, and the orange paint kind of right, blend I'm together. Get a little bit of orange on. Okay. <clears throat> I get the orange. There you edges. go. Yep. Oh, oh, a little yeah. bit more orange paint. A little bit more paint on your brush. Okay. Oh, no. No, that's good. That's good. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to keep going. So I'm going to get my um, the face of my giraffe wet, and then I'm going to add some yellow, and then I'm going to add a little bit of orange around so the edges. You put, you put water on it? Yep, you put, always start with water first. I put on the bottom <coughs> and then. Mm -hmm. All right, then I'm gonna do my water, other ear. And then, and then. And the other side of my giraffe's face. I think the center part of the giraffe and the nose of the giraffe, I'm going to um, paint a cool color because it's dark like the spots. This one is enough for me. Yeah, good. All right, and once you get the hang of it, you don't need to watch us do the whole thing. So All right, so we're going to paint the giraffe, the part of the giraffe um, face that is not painted yet. So I'm gonna use purple to paint inside here. And I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use blue for it. Blue, that's another good cool color. Uh, so you can pick any of the cool colors to I paint this part. I'm going to get blue mm -hmm. right now. All right, what if this is not really blue? It is. All right, and let's see. I think I'm also going to paint the nose part this purple color as well. All right, so I'm going to turn mine around. You can turn yours upside down. I'm going to do that. There you go. All right, now time for me to do. Oh, this is not really, that's not really blue though. Oh, it's a nice turquoise color. I like yeah. it. What's going on? You got messy? No, I just got a little bit on my hand. Oh, that's just part of art. Okay, so I painted my giraffe's face with the cool color. No, I now, that's all right. You can keep doing your thing. I'm going to look for the spots that I outlined purple. Mm -hmm. I'm going to color those in purple. It's looking good. Right. Whoop! I got that. Excellent. 
All right, do you have any turquoise spots on your giraffe that you can paint that same color? I'm going to do that right now. Go for it. Okay, while you're doing that, I'm going to clean my brush and pick a new color, and I think I'm going to do my blue next. So I'm gonna clean my brush, get some blue on here, and start filling in my blue spots. All right, I finished my blue, now I'm adding my turquoise. Now I finished my blue, and now I'm gonna go with red. Red, now I have a question. Is red a cool color? It's okay, you don't have to stick with cool colors, but that's what we've been doing so far. So if you were gonna do red, is red cool or warm? It's kind of cool. Um, if you mixed red with purple, it would be a cool color. But red by itself is a warm color. But if you want red on your giraffe, you can add red on your giraffe. I'm just gonna There's no color rules. I'm just gonna do a little bit of red right there, All right. and then do purple, so and then because that's how it's gonna become a cool color. All right. And I wonder what it's gonna make. It's an experiment. I get this. All right, where is my, oh. What is purple? All right. I'm gonna give my giraffe um, some little hair. Right, I'm doing purple now on the red. And look now, it's a cool color. That is a pretty cool color. No, hey, wait, red and purple make maroon. Hmm, it is kind of a red violet. So maroon is kind of in that same color family. Okay, so RJ, you're gonna keep fi fixing yours and keep going. I'm gonna let mine dry just a few minutes and see if I wanna add any more colors. So RJ and I have finished coloring in our spots and I went back and I at darkened some of mine up because once sometimes when you let watercolors dry, they dry a little bit light. So you can always go back and do a second layer. So everything is painted and we're gonna add the final touches. So we grabbed a permanent marker, any black marker will do, and I'm going to write the word hello because this cute little giraffe is turning his head upside down to say hello to us. And guys, if your mom or anything lets you have a Sharpie, you can get one. That's true. That's hello. True. Hello with a little exclamation point. Can you do that too? Yeah. And then while you have your Sharpie in your hand, keep going. You can write your name somewhere at the bottom of the page. So let's see, where should we do that? Oh, no. Good, I'm gonna put mine down in the bottom corner. Can you put yours down in the bottom corner? Hello, it doesn't really look like hello though. No, that's okay, it does. All right, let's write your name. Good. And I hope you have as much fun making your silly giraffes as RJ and I had. And I think that you can make these amazing colors and turn them into a fabulous work of art to hang up in your room. And we will do another project next week with you at the same time. RJ, what can they do if they like this video and want to see more? They can subscribe. And subscribe. That's right. Thanks for your help today, RJ. Mm -hmm. All right. See you soon, guys. Hey guys, this is RJ here, and I'm gonna show you a uh, very cute Alright, um, what do you guys see? Oh, that's a lot of paints, huh? Yeah. Alright, where do I keep my paper? Uh, I have no idea. Yeah, you do, I just showed you. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there, isn't there? Yeah, the XL. Uh-huh. We've got a lot of watercolor paper. That's a big XL. I know, right? What kind of XL is this? That's watercolor paper. Oh, All right, let's okay. see what else you see. All right, put this back in. Okay, thank you. All right, let's keep going. What do you see over here on these shelves? Uh, we see uh, a bobblehead. Uh-huh. A random figure. Oh, random books. figure. Uh, 
Uh huh. Uh huh. Hi. Right. What do you guys see over here? Hmm. I don't know. What do you see? I see a table. <laughs> yeah. And I see uh this. I don't know. It's called an easel. An easel. So I when I'm teaching art classes, I do my art on the big easel in the front of the room. But when I'm doing videos, I have it set up on the table like this. What? Yeah. So that way the art kids at home can see what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's keep right. going. What else do you see, RJ? All right. Now we're going to get to the tour over here. Oh, the tour over here. This is kind All of right. the dirty what part of the office. What do you guys see over here? Big, giant, dirty sink. Yeah, uh -huh. a dirty sink because there's all paint in there because that's how you wash your hands with paint. Yes, that's true. Yeah, so I have all of my cups and bowls and those are letters from my kids that artwork from my art kids that have made me stuff. And <laughs> all right, is there anything else we need to show them, RJ? Uh, only the shelves over here and this and number Uh-huh, yep, yeah, that's where uh, I teach my classes. Here or, or paint. Washes, which are kind of connected. Well, yeah, those are stuck together. <laughs> That's here okay. Here are the paintbrushes. Here are the paintings. Mm-hmm. And then I have a giant paintbrush over the door. Did you see that? What? Yeah, giant paintbrush. Do you see it? Oh my goodness! <laughs> if that was actually a real paintbrush, I would uh, paint all of them. That, that would make for a very cool art project. And this. Uh huh. What do I do there? What do you think I do? I you do draw. I do. Sometimes I show them how to draw stuff on the board there. Yeah. All right. Good work, RJ. Thank you for the tour. Can you say bye? Bye. <laughs>